Wow, what a beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day. I know I didn't say that early enough. I haven't, I haven't said that at all. Yes. But I want everybody to know that today's scripture is a beautiful piece of scripture. It's a commandment that Jesus Christ gave us. And that commandment is that we should love one another as Jesus loved us. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that describe a mother? It's very meaningful, isn't it, this year? Because Mother's Day falls on the day of this reading. I think Jesus meant it as a commandment to fill his power and his promise to us. And he has commanded our mothers to love us. And they do it so well. So well. They do it as Jesus did. Not as a commandment, but as a joy. A joy that's in them, as Jesus said. He said, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. How many mothers here today would not have complete joy if they didn't love their children? You see, it's hardly a burden, isn't it? Loving your children comes natural. It's a joy. Doesn't your hearts flitter, moms, every time you say, I love you to a child? Doesn't it make you happy inside? So we have good reasons to follow our hearts, don't we? Because it's a commandment from Jesus, but it's one that we don't feel as a commandment. It's one that we don't know. We just fill our hearts with joy. We owe it to Jesus because Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life. As the scripture said earlier, it says to give one's life for another out of love. I think each and every one of our mothers have given their lives to their children. Because how many times, moms, that you wanted to go out and you can't because you have a sick child? How many times did you want to just take a walk and you can't because you have laundry to do? How many times did you want to go visit your friends and you can't because you have a meal to prepare? Too many to count, isn't it? So a mother gave up her life for the one she loved. That's what Jesus is talking about. To lay down your life for the one that you love. Maybe physical, but it's also another one is that you give up your life of time for the one that you love. This passage today is a passage about the connection the connection that we have with Jesus Christ and in that love. He's teaching us that. And we, we read last week in the first part of just John 15 is where Jesus said that I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. As I like to look at it today, mothers, you're the true vine. And Jesus is the vine grower. And you branch out and you share your love with your children. And they branch out and branch out. Look at your family history. How many people from the birth of one child have you given your love out to? You have your love of your child and your child's child and child's child's child. And it keeps on going. Your love will go on for eternity. But we do have to be careful of one thing, is that this love can be broken. There's a number of things that can make it, because our love and the vein of love that falls in us is fragile. It can be broken. It can be broken by just anger or forgetfulness. There's so many people in this world that try to block our love for one another. There's so many people in this world that try to pull us out of loving one another for their own personal gain. So as mothers and parents, we have to make sure we love them no matter what. So we don't lose that touch, that reality of the vein of Jesus Christ. But there's good news. Even if we happen to fall short of loving one another and we fall and our vein burst and we can't get back, 
we always can get reconnected to Jesus Christ. Reconnected to God because he's always there. Whether he's working in us, but he could be working in our children. Our children can help us reconnect. Because of the love that you gave them, they can turn around and share that love back and reconnect you. So that you'll be able to enjoy that love that is going on. You see, our society today is one that it's just has all this powerful toxic junk in it, doesn't it? These elements, these words, these problems, these things, these people's ideas telling us that it's not good to do this anymore. The evil one. Satan's working hard to break that love, to break that vine, to make our branches wither up and die. But we've got to remember that Jesus Christ is there and strong. I mean, how many of us here look on TV and you hear about a child being neglected? Constantly. Or a child just, the parent hurts the child or the parent kills the child. We hear that constantly. Just a few weeks back, the baby that was in the freezer... It's devastating. That love connection is broken. Broken forever. It's just on the tip of the iceberg in this world. It's always on TV. And if we hear one case, we know there's probably many, many more. This is where we, as mothers and guiders of God's love, need to share it and help those people connect. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them about the love that you have for your children and the children's love they have for you. Because our world is falling because of sin. And it's up to us to follow Jesus' commandment and love one another. Just to love one another. A good example, of a few years ago I served at a church named St. Petri. We were getting ready to do our staff meeting when we had a knock at the door. A young man and his friend came in. And he said to us, he said, I've been traveling so long, I don't have any money. I need a place to stay tonight because I can't stay where I originally thought I could. So the pastor and I went out and we put him up in a hotel. We gave him $20 so he can have breakfast in the morning. And we talk to him. We ask him, why can't you stay where you thought you were? He said, well, you see, my, my mother doesn't live far from here, but she won't let me stay at her house tonight. Um, apparently, she had her reasons for that, but that's the disconnect. That's the disconnection that we can get from love. We talked to the gentleman. We gave him some advice. He loved his mother so much he told her that the next morning, the following day, he was able to spend the night with her. How we told him what Jesus said, that we, it's a commandment that we must love one another. Another good example, a friend of mine, Bill, when I was growing up, and it was in our junior high, high school times, at least five or six years, we walked every day to the school bus. We saw each other at least six times a week, six days a week. He'd come over to my house. I'd let him in. We'd go in the other room. we have a great time. But whenever I went to his house, they had this stairway going up. It was dark on both sides. But I was never allowed to go into his house. I was never allowed to take that path up there. I'd see a fragment of a woman standing in the doorway, this figure, I was never allowed to go in. I rarely saw his mother. I only saw her at a distance. And I thought to myself someday, what would I say to her if I was close enough to talk to her? Would I ask her, how come I'm not welcome? What's the deal? But instead, I chose just to love her for who she is. Well, years went by, and his mother passed away, and I attended the funeral. Bill got up there, and he started talking, and he said a poem. He said, I give this to my beloved mother. The poem was called Watching at the Gate. 
The poem went like this. She always leaned to watch for us, anxious as we were late. In the winter by the window, in the summer by the gate. And we were mocked, and we mocked her tenderly, who had such foolish care. The long way home wouldn't seem more safe because she was waiting there. Her thoughts were all so full of us. She never could forget. And so I think that where she is, she must be watching us yet. Waiting till we come home to her, anxious if we were late. Watching from heaven's window, leaning from heaven's gate. When I heard Bill say that, as how I am, I'm touched. Because here's a young man whose mother was always so distant. I can imagine Bill must have had a hard time in his life. But he was able to follow that commandment in that love, and he reconnected his mother to God. The love that she gave him turned around and he went back to her. Because I found later in the later years of his life that his mother was more open, more accepting. In his 30s, he was allowed to have somebody come in his home. It's because of the love that he had for her. His mother was so devoted to watching out for those children that she looked through the window. But the ironic thing is, they had no gate. No gate. You see, the poem here was quite simple. The story, talk about his story and about a mother's love for someone. She loved him so much to the point that she got disconnected. But he still loved her, sent that love right back to her. Her own love cured her. The same love that Jesus gives us and the love that we give him. It will cure us. It will give us that understanding. We will understand what we need to do in life because we will love one another as Bill did. There's so much power in that vine of life, isn't there? That vine of love. We can't wait. We can't hold it back, can we? How many mothers can here not love their children? Hmm, I didn't see any hands. How many mothers here love their children? Now, that's, that's, that's what it's all about, isn't it? See, God gives us a life, and he gives us a new life every time we love our children. It springs up in front of us. That love grows around us. It reconnects us. It shares us not only together and bonds us together, but it shares and bonds us with Christ. God invested in mothers, and our mothers invest in us. What a long way to go. They bared a lot of pain for us, haven't you, Mom? A lot of pain. But is that pain worth the love you get in return? The love in return is that you can't, you can't phantom it. You can't imagine it. See, I don't think there's ever a mother out there in this world that will give their child less love than they already have. There's no mother out here that wants us to be disconnected from the vine, the vine of God's love. But we are to connect with God. Our mothers may not understand and may love us too much to get disconnected. It is our job as children to reconnect with our mothers. Because they have a lot to give us. A lot of love to show us. And let me say it again. Moms love us. And we should love them as a commandment that Jesus Christ gave to us. That connection or reconnection that we have is a mother to a child at times, just as it happened with Bill. 
God knows mothers should be loved very much. And so should we know. And then we find therein that is the joy and the fruits of our lives. And thereby, thereby the Father is glorified through our love. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the mothers. They are showing the true love that you show for us. A lot of mothers have given up their lives, their dreams, so that they can raise and teach and nurture us. Help us to return that love. Help us to be able to show that love to others, especially all our new mothers out there as they have children, be able to pass that love on that their mother has shared with them. And we're all connected to you, the true vine, the true vine of love that you've given to your son, Jesus Christ, as a parent loves a child. And Lord, thank you for today, and thank you for our mothers. In your name we pray, amen.